In this problem, we are given four force vectors on the unit circle and asked to determine the resultant force and direction. To do this, we'll write each of the vectors in component form, find the sum of the vectors, then determine the magnitude and direction to answer the question. So again, the first step is to find the sum of the four force vectors. To do this, notice how the force in newtons would be the magnitude and the angle is the direction which means you can write each of the vectors in component form since if a vector makes an angle theta with the positive x-axis, then the x component is equal to the magnitude of vector v times cosine theta and the y component is equal to the magnitude of v times sine theta. So to save some time, I've already written this out. For the first vector, notice how the x component is 40 times cosine 165 degrees. For the second force vector, the x component is 45 times cosine 240 degrees. For the third vector, the x component is 60 times cosine 45 degrees. And for the fourth vector, we have 70 times cosine 295 degrees. And for the y component of the first force vector, we have 40 times sine 165 degrees. For the second force vector, the y component is 45 times sine 240 degrees. For the third, we have 60 times sine 45 degrees. And finally for the fourth, the y component is 70 times sine 295 degrees. So now we need to add the x and y components on the calculator in degree mode. And we'll go ahead and show this. The calculator is already in degree mode. To add the x components, we enter 40 cosine 165 plus 45 cosine 240 plus 60 cosine 45 and finally plus 70 times cosine 295. Enter. To four decimal places we have 10.8727 and now we do the same for the y components by simply changing the cosine function to the sine function. On this calculator, we can press second enter and just change the cosines to sines. So we change the cosine to sine here, here, and two more on the right. And notice how we do get approximately negative 49.6335. We're told to round the answer to two decimal places, but I'm using four decimal places here because now we have to find the magnitude and direction of this resultant force. And let's do this on the next slide. Also notice the vectors in the fourth quadrant because the x component is positive and the y component is negative. Let's begin by determining the resultant force by determining the magnitude of the resultant vector, which is equal to the square root of the square of 10.8727 plus the square of negative 49.6335. And now we'll go back to the calculator. To two decimal places, we round down to 50.83. So 50.83 is a resultant force in newtons. And now you need to find the direction by determining the angle theta, where tangent theta is equal to y divided by x. We take the inverse tangent on both sides of the equation. We have theta is equal to inverse tangent or arctangent of y divided by x, which in our case is a negative 49 point six three three five divided by ten point eight seven two seven. And now going back to the calculator, we know we are in degree mode, so we press second tangent for inverse tangent, and then we enter the quotient. Enter. And we have approximately negative seventy seven point six four degrees. Now if we take a look at the coordinate plane, we just found this angle here. This is not the angle we want because remember, 
the direction of a vector is measured from the positive x-axis counterclockwise, we want to give the direction as this angle here. So there's a couple ways of doing this. We can take 360 degrees and subtract 77.64 degrees, or simply add or simply add 360 degrees to negative 77.64 degrees. This gives us 282.36 degrees for the direction of the resultant vector, which we call angle theta. I hope you found this helpful.